Hello fellow YouTubers, this is DeafMonkey75 and this review is going to be on the uh, well-loved, much-reviewed and very nice Kershaw Skyline. Uh, I actually got this a couple of days after I got Mo so sweet because I love that knife so much I had to get another one. This one again is about $30. Uh, I got this at Walmart, I think it's like $34.99 there. I never realized they had knives like this until after I saw online people saying they bought stuff like this at Walmart. And it's kind of like, okay, I didn't know they care. I figured they'd all be crap. But apparently they do have some decent stuff there. This one has a flipper on the back and ambidextrous thumb studs. It is not spring assisted, but it does come out pretty good with the thumb studs takes a little bit of practice because they can be hard to use. Uh, they're kind of close to the uh, close to the handle there and really low profile. You can see they don't stick out over the handle so there's not much there but uh, if you play with it, practice, whatever, you can do that pretty quickly. Um, my preferred method in most people's is this uh, flipper tang on the back. Uh, you can flip it out uh, no wrist movement really needed. You might, again, have to practice that some because some people have to flip it to get it to lock. Um, I guess just my fingers gotten used to it now so I can get it come up pretty quick. It is a liner lock. Uh, mine kind of only sits maybe with about a third to half of it on the blade. It makes me a little nervous even with my light use. Uh, I might go in there and touch it up, you know, just kind of run it on a bench stone a couple times or something, just see if I can get that thing to sit further in there. Uh, but it's pretty solid. I mean, it's normal use. It's probably not coming out. I just would feel better if it was all the way under the blade. It is a pretty decent and fairly thick liner lock for the blade size. Uh, not too much thinner, it doesn't look like, than the blade stock. Uh, not a whole lot thinner. It's not as thin as the one the Oso Sweet. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, I'd just rather it be all underneath the blade. It has uh, a G10 handle scales, and this knife actually started my love and addiction with G10. So far, the other knives I've bought after this have all had G10 handles. Uh, so, I mean, uh, just, I prefer the feel of this over like FRN, uh, wood and some other stuff. I just love the way the G10 feels. Um, notice it does have only one liner. It's the liner that supports the lock mechanism. The other side has no liner whatsoever. It's just the handle scale, which this is essentially fiberglass. So I mean, it's really pretty stiff. It's not going anywhere. Uh, really light knife at two and a half ounces. Uh, has a three and eighth inch uh, cutting area on the blade. Uh, the actual edge, you know, is a three, uh, three and one eighth inch blade. Uh, it is a Sandvik 14C28N steel that they used on this. So that's supposed to be a better steel than what's on the Oso Sweet, uh, the AUS 6A. And this is one that is made in the U.S. It has Kershaw on it. On the opposite side, it is, you know, 1760 is the model number. KAI patented. Made in the USA. This is a USA made knife for $30. And it's very nice. Uh, came out of the box. Uh, razor sharp. Uh, I mean, it just hair popping, you know. Uh, I did have to touch this up, this one up a little bit because when I got it from Walmart, uh, got it out of the box, you know, you can look at the edge of a blade under a light and see shiny spots if it's dull or anything. Well, I happened to notice while playing with it, it had a couple of little shiny areas. And what I'm guessing happened is maybe somebody looked at it, like, you know, they had somebody look at it or maybe one of the workers used it, I don't know. But uh, it's like maybe they cut on the glass countertop and just dulled a couple of spots in the blade. Uh, nothing major. I touched it up. Uh, it's 
you know, the rest of the blade was perfect. I just had to touch it up a little bit and get it back to perfection on those spots. Uh, but there's no visible wear or anything like that. It looks brand new. I mean, you know, well, a little bit of wear after I got done with it, but, uh, you know, just whenever I got it, it uh, was brand new, no problems. I mean, I wasn't too worried about that. I'm pretty sure if, you know, the uh, workers or somebody hadn't fondled it or done what they weren't supposed to and cut on glass, it probably would have been perfect. <clears throat> now, um, there's the clip. Now, again, it's a two-screw clip. Something about this one, it doesn't move. It stays still, doesn't tilt. I don't know if it's just because the other one's two screws in an angle or what. This one doesn't have any problems. Uh, you know, uh, I said in my, oh, in my oh so sweet review that the clip moved, and it's probably because it had two screws. Well, this is one uh, probably because it has a bigger base here. The other one, the base is only as big as like the two screws in a row. Uh, this one's got a little more area, plus this is G10, a little grippier. It sinks down a little more than it does in uh, FRN. It does have a lanyard hole. And also this one, I modified it as well, just like on the uh, oh, oh So Sweet. It's only got two screws down in the bottom here on either side of the lanyard hole, lanyard hole. Uh, so I just took the line of the backspacer which came to maybe here or so you know like a third to a half of the knife was covered up and just cut that little tongue off and again rounded it on a bench stone flattened it out got it nice and smooth and nice looking and it's a flow through <laughs> you can see I also trimmed out the piece here at the very bottom. I mean, uh, normally if you haven't seen this knife before, it has a solid, this black piece is solid all the way down to the point and up the back here. So I just kind of trimmed out. It's like a little triangle looking shape there. Uh, and I might get some spacers or something from uh, knifekits.com or find some tubing there and make it a true flow through, but really, I like the way this looks. I like that. You know, that doesn't bother me. There's nothing really gets caught in there. It's easy enough to clean. I just want it to be more flow through. And again, that just personalizes a knife. It makes it mine. Probably not a whole lot of people out there with a skyline that has the flow through design. And if there is, they may have done it differently. Uh, clip is strong. So it ain't coming out. You're going to have uh, a... Uh, about that much sticking out of your pocket when you put it in there. Again, not a big problem for me. Some of you might not like that. Uh, you know, over a half inch, maybe actually closer to three quarter. I don't know. I don't feel like measuring it. But still, that's a good chunk of knife that sticks out. But I like it tip up. It gives me something to grab. Uh, you know, I don't go running full three, full speed through the woods or anything. So I'm not worried about it getting knocked out. You know. Uh, that type of thing. It is, uh, as you can tell by the modification, you can take this thing apart. It has uh, torque screws, two in the scales here, uh, and that does go through and hold that onto that uh, backer, and then one pivot point. Um, but really, I can't say enough good things about this knife. It's nice and thin. Uh, you know, you carry it in your pocket. You don't feel it too much when you reach in to get your keys. Uh, the oh so sweet is obviously my camera's taking a suicide dive there I really wanted to see the knife let's get this thing back there we go it might be crooked but oh well uh, yeah I've got this thing set up on the interesting arm set up here with a these little bendy arms that they normally use for uh, holders that do like uh, scan guns and stuff. So it's not really made for this, but makeshift tripod, whatever. I guess you get what you paid for and this was free. But still, a really nice knife. And uh, apparently the camera likes it a lot. And uh, it's just thin and light. Uh, strong enough to do anything I want to do with it. Uh, nice thick blade with the 
It does have a hollow grind. It starts pretty high up on the blade too, about the uh, upper third here. So it is, you know, flat, and then the rest is all ground down to the bottom, which gives it a pretty thin. And I know there's no way this camera is going to pick that up. But there's a really thin edge there that it's putting a head that you're sharpening or that is sharpened. So that thing gets really sharp. Uh, in fact, when I first got this and was playing with it, you know, just <clears throat> straight out of the box. Uh, later, I noticed I had a few like paper cut type cuts, you know, none of them bleeding, but just a few nicks and stuff from playing with this stupid thing. It's uh, it's, it's that sharp. You don't notice it. Don't can't tell until you notice you have just got some cuts in your fingers. Uh, and I have no clue how, because yeah, of course, uh, I guess that's just kind of what you face. But uh, no, it's just a really good blade. I like the way it sweeps down here. Lots of uh, I guess people call that the belly. <coughs> Lots of that. Uh, so it is good if you want to cut like this. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of cutting like this. I'm going to the kitchen knife on this board. <laughs> but uh, like boxes and stuff, you know, you punch in tape or whatever in the box and, you know, cut your way through. Uh, cutting packing straps, you know, zipping through a letter, with it upside down, whatever. Uh, it's perfect. It goes through everything. It does whatever I need to do. I've even used it to reach into a label printer to straighten out a paper guide. Uh, somehow somebody out in the plant where I work got a paper guide jacked up in the uh, label printer so I was able to reach this in there, kind of click off the sides and then push it back down into place. And I just realized it was handy to have. Um, you know, was, I probably wouldn't have done that if there was any threat of breaking the tip, but it was a loose guide. It wasn't going to do anything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a handy knife. Uh, nice blade, nice shape. Feels really good, light, uh, has a good, decent grip with this G10. Uh, if you've never had G10 before, this will probably start you down a path of other G10 bearing knives. Uh, it has me. Um, I mean, just overall a nice looking, sexy little knife. I mean, it's, you know, just really nice. Uh, so if you want a nice blade, uh, something light, something you're not going to really notice that you have on you, something you can keep in your pocket, you know, clip to the side, reach through to get your change, phone, whatever, and it's not going to gouge the crap out of the back of your hand. Uh, it just feels nice and comfortable. Uh, feels great in the hand, easy to deploy. Should be legal most everywhere because there are no springs involved, no nothing, not a switchblade, not spring assisted. Um, unless you're in some retardville that outlaws one-handed openers, which I've heard of that. Uh, this is a great knife for, uh, you know, $30 to pick up. Or you get online, go to Walmart, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's just uh, a really nice one. And it definitely, I feel, deserves every bit of praise I've seen online for this thing. Uh, every single uh, bit of adoration. Because uh, it seems like everybody loves this thing, and now I know why. So, definitely highly recommended. Uh, this has been my knife review on the Kershaw Skyline. Uh, Y'all have a good day now.